guys, this is Forensic Forks with Deontay, and I'm back with another video. This is episode 15 to the Asian Session Library. If you're unfamiliar with this model, please go back to the beginning of the series, work your way back up to episode 15. You'll see how simple this model is. We show it with the same pair every single time it comes true. So here, we're looking at 12 to 8 p.m. This gray highlighted zone is a dead zone. You are not permitted to trade here. Because you're most likely going to face a phase of consolidation, we as traders want to avoid that. What we want to trade is when the market starts to gyrate in a particular direction. It makes one decision one way, then it changes its mind. We're looking for a false break or a turtle soup. That is what the Asian session model is all about. We're looking for a turtle soup to get retail traders on the wrong side. And how do we find that? We just look for liquidity that's rated and we look to see price go opposite to that. We find a lower time frame entry. So we're starting here on the 15 minute time frame and we're going to locate our buy side and sell side liquidity. We know sell side is resided below swing lows. So this is a swing low because this low here is higher and the low on the right is higher as well. So this makes that swing point here. So that's a swing low. Take three bars. Got a swing low there. We don't have one here. This is not a swing low because you can see the candle on the left is actually lower. So this can't be a swing low. And we do have a potential one here as well going into the session. But let's not even consider that because that will be going into the Asian session. If we look for swing highs now, we can see you have one just before the Asian session, which is here. And what's above the swing highs? Buy side liquidity. Nothing changes. The same thing just on the 15 minute time frame. Buy side liquidity. Same thing here. Buy side. Now what makes that a swing high? It's simply because the high in the middle is higher than the candle on the left and the right. That makes that that swing point there. So we have the highest high of this session and some other swing highs that have been left open and not broken. We have the lowest low of the session and some other lows that haven't been broken as well. We have the Asian open here. So we just mark that off. So that's the open of Asian. You know, with ideology of opening price, it's fair value. So anything above this opening price, this is 8 p.m. open. Anything above is going to be a premium. Anything below is a discount. It's ideal to sell in a premium and it's ideal to buy in a discount. That's how it generally works for all traders. When price goes forward, we see what happens. You can see we take out buy side liquidity. So right here, we have a raid or a purge on buy side. At this point, there could be an opportunity to go short. Why is that? Because we've now convinced and ran stops, we've triggered orders, people on the breakout here, right here, or people that had a protective stop loss above it from selling, and they trailed their stop down to this high. So this order is being tripped up here. Traders may be looking to go long, and traders that were short are knocked out of the market. At this point, we'll be looking for a one-minute lower time frame market shift. Now, this can also form on a two-minute, three-minute, and five-minute as well, but I preferly, me, Deontay, I go with the one minute entry. So we go down to the one minute. We're going to be looking for a market shift, which in my definition is a swing low ran with speed or a fair value gap to the downside. So we're looking for a swing low that is rated with speed. We don't have any swing lows rated yet with any speed here. And this is the 15 minute swing high, just to recap there. And those are the 15 minute swing lows. We're just viewing it on a one minute perspective. We're going into the Asian session. We're above the opening price, this dashed line, so we're in a premium. You should be already thinking, I'm a seller at this point. It's too expensive. Price is overbought. It's more ideal for me to sell, not buy. Why buy at a higher price? Sell it at a higher ticket and then buy it back maybe potentially in the future at a lower price. That's the whole point of the game. So now we play it forward and we're looking to see if we get any market shift to the downside. Any market shift. Nothing yet. And then there we go. So we got a market shift right here. So you can see right here, that swing low is rated with a fair value gap. Now, this is a pattern that shows itself pretty frequently, especially amongst this model. And I take advantage of this. And this is how I show you the same entry technique in all 15 episodes over and over again. At the beginning, we did start with just the fair value gap by itself, the very first fair value gap that forms after the break on the 15 minute high. So normally we would take this entry. We used to take this entry up here. For those that have been following for a while, we knew it was this one that we were going for. But we've noticed that sometimes this one tends to not be the most suited and price can 
continue to rally and dig into that sell order and put you into more drawdown and ultimately lead to a stop or a failure. We like to wait for this. This is more confirmation. We prefer that. We're still in a premium, so it's still ideal to sell. Yes, this could have been an opportunity, but I would miss this opportunity and rather take this all the time. I think it's just a well more fundamental coded pattern that forms on the algorithm after certain things happen. So we got that rate on buy side, then this fingerprint shows itself. The algorithm prints this formation. That is where we would look to go short here. So if you're following the docs, this is how I was doing it and how I was tracking it. I'm going with a 15 pip SL generally. And that's what the, the spreadsheet has. All the stop losses are 15 pip SLs or about 15. So like some of them are like 14, 15, but I rounded to 15. And then I'm looking for either a 15 pip TP. So one to one or if you wanted to increase it, you could go for a 20 pip TP or a 20 pip SL, a one to one as well, risking a dollar to gain a dollar. Or you can start making what? You risk a dollar to gain two. You risk a dollar to gain three. You risk a dollar to gain four. You can do that as well. But just on a very simple turn of objectives, this would be very achievable in my opinion. So getting 15, even minimalistically, 10 pips out of the market is ideal. If you look at the spreadsheet, I have it going from 10 pips, 20. 30 and 40 is really the best situation. Getting 40 pips in one session is really nice. And then anything on 40 plus is a 10 point pip increment. So every plus sign equals 10. So if you're looking at the Excel sheet that I'm going to share here in the description, you follow that link, you'll see the entire results for this Asian session model for October. I went back and did all the data and collected it. This is the most recent one we showed in the Telegram channel here. We showed that last night. We were looking to go short on UJ and it worked out really well. So at this point, we play it forward. We're waiting for entry. So here, we're now in long. You can see we're long in. Boom. And I meant long, short. I'm always saying things backwards. We're in short now, guys. I apologize. We're in short. And you can see we do eat some drawdown. But as we play it forward, we'll speed it up. We're most likely trying to get price back down to that 15-minute swing low. That's no, most likely going to be the rate. And we can see we definitely acquired 15 pips. It was ideal. We were able to get that. That's achievable without getting a run on 15 pips to the SL. And taking a loser, we took a winner. Now, at this point, you can get out or you can trail a stop. Most likely, you would get out and call it a day. You call it a winner so you could just have consistent profits and not risk your equity to, oh, you know, insisting that price should go lower. That doesn't necessarily mean it should go lower. Because what if it did hit 15 pip mark down? And then it turns around and then it runs your stop and you got greedy and you didn't take any profits at all. And we can see here, played out to the end of the session. Price gets down to that 15 minute swing low and you can see that reaction off of it. Now, I know many people may ask, oh, how would you know if there's going to be a reaction there? Who knows? That's why Forex is unpredictable. The markets are unpredictable. There are certain things that you have to leave yourself open to. Yes, price could hit this and could still continue to tear down to this. It decided not to. How would I know that it was gonna if it's gonna tear down to this one? I have no idea. Nobody has that idea. We don't know when the market's gonna say, hey, at this price point here, I'm going to now stop and turn around. That's a guess. Some people may take a chance of that, saying, if it hits this level, I can buy. That's an opportunity. If you're look thinking about it in that perspective, but overall, market is unpredictable. You got to be open to all different situations and take your winners. And if you play it forward, so let's go back on the 15 minute time frame and play it up to current day. So let's say we kept this trade open. Let's say we never scaled out or we, or let's say we did scale out and we never moved our stop loss though. We kept our original stop loss, which is up here. You can see in the red line, 151.506. And we played out to what we are currently now in price right here. So from there, all the way down, so from 151, 356 to about 150, we got about 60 pips in, right? 60 plus pips, if I had to just eyeball it. I think I'm eyeballing it way too off. 356, it's about, yeah, so about, yeah, about 70 pips we got there. So this model does end up trending into the daily draw sometimes. Now, that may be maybe every single day, but overall, you can see how the model is consistent. There's no change up to it. 
15 episodes of this, folks. 15 of the same example with the same pair. How many more episodes can I do to show you that this model is something that really exists? Hopefully this is insightful. Peace.